I'm going to demonstrate a way of creating a uh, set of arrowheads around following a circle. Okay. Uh, we'll also show at the end how to create that following some arbitrary path as well. A couple weeks ago we got an email into Screencasters from one of our uh, viewers, Stefan Tim, and he asked this very question, how do I get nice arrows around a circular path? So I'm going to demonstrate here one way of doing it using Inkscape. Uh, 0.46, and as usual, there's probably five or ten different ways you could achieve this. I think this way is very quick, um, and uh, yields good results. So we'll give it a shot. The first thing I will do uh, is I will first create uh, an arrowhead that I want to have around my circle, and the way I, I just want a nice triangular arrowhead. The way I do it is uh, I hold the control key to create a square. I will bring up the fill and stroke dialog box, control shift F, and I will uh, turn the stroke off, turn the fill on. Okay. Now I'll first of all duplicate that. I want another rectangle in a minute. Um, so I'll take this first one, single click once, single click twice. I'll hold the control key and rotate this 45 degrees. Um, it's a rectangle, but I, I need this to be a path, so what I'll do is I'll hit Control shift c to turn it into a path. So now when I double-click it, I can just take this one node and hit Delete. Now I've got my triangle very quick. Okay. The second thing I'm going to do is this object, this arrowhead is going to be going around this circle, and I want to make sure um, the method I use is going to require that I kind of trim that circle in certain places. And the way it's going to work is I'm going to take this um, square. It can be a rectangle, though. It doesn't have to be a square. Okay, let's take this rectangle. I'm going to move it on top of this arrow. Okay. And what this is going to do, we'll just change color so you can see it and probably uh, lower its opacity a little bit. When this arrowhead is placed on the path, if I don't do anything, it's just going to be a path with a bunch of arrowheads on it. And I want to have discrete separate arrows. So what I'm going to do is actually create this extra object that's going to let me trim the path in front of every arrowhead so I can get discrete arrows. You'll see how it works in a minute. I'm just going to make this a bit taller in case my path line gets really wide or fat. Both of these have to be paths. So right now I have a path and a rectangle. I will just take the rectangle, hold Control shift c to convert it to a path. Now they're both paths and I will hit Control g to group them together. Okay. Now, um, now I, I want to have this group of objects and I want my path Okay, that I, that I want this to go around. So I'll hold, take the circle tool, hold Control, create a circle. I will probably enlarge that a little bit. Okay, something like that. And I now uh, want this to be just a path, uh, an outline of a path. So uh, Control shift f to bring up the Fill and Stroke dialog box. I will turn the fill off, turn the stroke on, OK, make it fully opaque. Next, I will uh, turn this path, this ellipse, you can see at the bottom, into a path. Control shift c does that for me. So now I have a group of two paths and another path. I want to take this group of two paths and make sure it's on top of or above the layer or level of this ellipse or this path, circular path. So what I do is just take these two objects, this group, and hit this button to bring it up to the top. That's the way this, the tool I'm going to use is called Pattern Along Path. 
and it requires that the pattern be above the path in the layer of things. So um, if you don't do that step, you'll kind of mess up and you won't get you'll get the circle you know, kind of applied around this path, which isn't what you want, obviously. Okay, so what I do is just simply select both objects, go to Effects, Generate from Path, Pattern Along Path, which brings up this nice dialog. And what I want to do is make sure, there's different settings here, it'll probably be by default set to Single, but you want it set to Repeated. And the deformation type you want set is not Ribbon, it's Snake. Okay, if you have ribbon set, it actually deforms these objects as they're placed around the path, which is useful for other cases, but not what we're going for uh, in this example. Next, you have really the only other thing we're going to vary here is the space between copies, and that we kind of play with. What I usually do is the live view, so you can see how these arrows are going to get placed, and these blue paths, these rectangles or polygons now, what I'm going to do with those is actually... Um, use them to trim this circular path so I can get separate arrowheads. Okay, so uh, that spacing looks good to me. You might uh, vary it if you wanted to, the arrowheads to be shorter. Uh, then you could do, uh, you know, say a change your spacing here to 100, and they'll be a lot shorter. Uh, in my case, I want them a lot longer. Let's say I want to have uh, 300 as my spacing. Okay, once I've done that, I'm going to click apply and then close. So now, what do I have left here? I have a path, which is here. We want to hit Control Z, leave it where it is for now. And I have this other thing, which is a group of two objects. Okay, I want to ungroup these two objects. So hit Control Shift G to ungroup them. Now what do I have? I have all the blue ones, hit Control Z, and all the black ones, hit Control Z. Okay, so that makes things nice and easy. What I can actually do now is I want to select the circular path, bring up the fill and stroke dialog box, okay, and I want to change the stroke style. I want to start upping that width of the stroke to be whatever I want my arrow line to be as far as width goes. Let's say it's something like that, okay. So that looks pretty good width-wise. What I have to do now is change this stroke that we've just fattened up into a path. The way I do that is while it's selected, I choose path, stroke to path. Okay, so now this is a path, a filled path. So now what I can do is select that black filled path, hold shift, select the blue rectangles, and I'm going to do a boolean operation. I'm going to say path difference. Bang. So now I've got rid of those blue rectangles out of my path. Now here obviously as you change the spacing you might get some doubled up arrowheads in my case. I'm going to uh, get rid of that in a minute. So what I'll do is just click on the arrowheads, their path. I want them to be all separate paths so I can say path break apart. Okay, so now I have separate arrowheads, separate uh, path here. I can again separate out these paths. This is the object here I want to separate. So I'll select it, path, break apart. Now I can get rid of individual objects. So say I want to leave that one, I want to get rid of this odd one. And now I have kind of a nice circular group of arrowheads. And you could go through if you wanted to um, you know, select each pair and and combine them again. You know, either Control K or go Path uh, Combine and create a you know set of separate discrete arrows. In this case, they're all paths. I can do a lot of different things with them. So, say we wanted to uh, combine the whole thing into one path, I would just select them all, hit Control K. Oh, sorry, union them all like this. So now I have this nice circular path of arrows and I can do things like um, maybe create some kind of perspective effect. So here we'll take our path, hold shift, select the perspective shape, effects, modify path, perspective, and we now have this nice perspective shape. We'll do something like 
um, see the outlines wrong. We'll just leave it like that for now because I want to show another quick example of how we might use this. So that's uh, um, a nice uh, set of arrowheads around a, a circle. Okay. Now, what you could also do is this works equally well for um, kind of arbitrary path. So let's take a path like this. We will can hardly see it there, so we'll increase the stroke style a little bit so you can see it. I will then take again this path. Sorry, I will select all the nodes and just give it some kind of nice curved shape. Okay. Again, you've got to make sure your pattern here is at the very top above this object we just created. So we'll make sure we bring it up to the top. We will select both things. Okay. And we will select effects, generate from path, pattern along path. Same settings. You can click the live preview. See if that's what we want. Click apply. Close the dialog. And now again, we take our path, we can increase the stroke width to be what we want. Okay, close it there. Take our this object and ungroup it. Always don't forget to take your path and turn it, um, go stroke to path. If you don't, this is what will happen. I'll take the path. I will take the blue rectangles and I will do a difference on them. And you get kind of this funky path, which I don't think is what you want. So make sure you take that black line that you've created, um, go stroke to path, and now you can do the difference that you wanted to do. And you get a nice stream of arrowheads. Again, at that stage where you're doing the free, the um, Live preview, you can adjust the spacing to get the kind of spacing you want. You can also adjust this blue rectangle to be fatter, maybe if you wanted a bigger gap between the arrowhead and the tail of the next arrow in front of it. That is it. I hope uh, that you got uh, some useful um, information out of it. Thank you very much for watching.